Well, hello, folks. I'm Ellie Little, and this is your daily TAU wrap. We take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective, each time asking ourselves what happened today, and what might it tell us about the coming days. I do this show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, live here at 9 o'clock Eastern Time from the base of the Rocky Mountains. Another rainy day, rained all day today here in the mountains. Uh, an unusually cool summer in the Rockies. Markets, what happened in the markets? Uh, let's take a look here, ending numbers. So last night we were talking about uh, that this markets, uh, or that these markets would try to trade down. Well, they did try, but you know, you had strength in the NASDAQ, in the NDX, and that pretty much held it up. Uh, Russell actually outperformed as well. Uh, if you look at the S&Ps, they were flat. Dow was actually down, so it was, you know, last night when we called it, we were talking about the NDX was the only one looking like it could try to go higher, and in fact did. Gold traded down. We had the Fed out today, and uh, the Fed basically um, it gave a nod to higher interest rates, uh, not interest rates, but a, a, high, a nod to higher inflation rates. Uh, but indicated that that probably wouldn't change his timetable. So they still dovish, you know, they emphasized unemployment and basically gave the markets what they wanted to hear because you had the GDP numbers out this morning, 4%. And of course, that was better than expected. So you got inflation on the rise, you got economic activity on the rise, and you got a Fed that refuses to in raise its interest rates or even to indicate that it's going to move up the timetable with respect to that. Other than that, everything's normal, right? We just keep uh, keep uh, pressing uh, pressing uh, to the uh, our feet to the fire here. Bonds got sold off as a result. Dollar stronger again. So that's uh, the dollar is actually on on quite a tear. And euro's down about two and a half percent this month, and the dollar is up about two. So a pretty big move in currencies for a month, and uh, that may matter here at some point, but so far, it's not uh, crazy enough to uh, get anybody worried. Let's take a look at the uh, actual charts. Okay, so the thing, the things that strike me, we got a retest regen off this high, right? We broke underneath it yesterday and stayed under it again today. That's two bars underneath. You had volume expanding as you went down. This thing looks to me like it is gonna trade to the bottom of this range and test it actually will end up being a small ABCD structure down as well if it does. It almost completed it today. The completion would be right down in there. So going to go after this swing point low and try to break it. That's why it was hitting today. That low is 1960.82. You got down to 1962.42. I suspect it's going to hit it. Whether or not this market can actually change trend remains to be seen. <laughs> it's certainly when it comes to the S&P 500. Uh, that will be the test. We'll see if it does. I suspect, just like it has been the case, when they get down there, they're going to buy it. And it's, it's no different than it has been. When they get down there, they're going to try to buy the thing. So that will be the test right into there. We'll see what they do when they get there. Tomorrow, you got PMI, flash PMI numbers coming out first of the month. GDP is, is fairly backward looking. I mean, I know this is advanced GDP, but uh, we're talking about um, a fairly lagging indicator compared to what you're gonna see out of PMIs, which is really telling you what the purchasing managers expect to do now. Not later, not what they did, what they're gonna do now. If we look at the Dow, so that was the S&P, the Dow. Dow Jones trades lower, also has an ABCD structure, didn't quite trigger it today, just like the S&P, so it hasn't triggered. It also has one, that one just gets it down to that low. It also wants to try to test the low. Uh, the volume characteristics here are not as negative as we just saw, uh, but still wanting to test lower. NASDAQ Composite tried to trade up, volume was lighter, went over, back under, 
Still over that breakout, the breakdown bar as of tonight though. So that's actually positive in the NDX. Also over uh, back under yeah, and so that, you know, if there if there is a failure, it's an over-under, but that is never a great indicator, um, but that is the way it sets up here. The Russell, Russell actually had some strength today. Uh, Russell pushing back up against this swing point lows high, 1150.48, got the 1150.61, did more volume. Uh, that looks like it's going to try again tomorrow, so... Once again, indexes still look to me like they're not quite ready to give it up. Yeah, they want to try to trade a little bit lower, but I suspect as soon as they do, you're going to see the buyers jump back in here and try to trade them right back up. So that's the indexes. Where we're seeing some deterioration and more and more so is in not the indexes, but in the, uh, the sectors. Right, because if you look at this, and I actually wrote an article today, and I'll pop over here real quick and plug it. And if you want, you can take a look at it. But essentially, you know, if you look at this from a bottoms up view, right, stocks, they move sectors. Sectors, well, actually, stocks move industry groups. Industry groups move sectors. Sectors move the indexes. And so if you, if you look at the stocks, and then see deterioration there and you start to see it in the industry groups and you start to see it in the sectors you're probably going to see it in the indexes and that's what's slowly happening and it's happening in a number of ways you can see the sectors starting to deteriorate we have four now that have broken you got another one tonight that looks like it wants to break and the one I'm talking about now is the uh, XLE XLE let me pull it up XLE is going after those lows and volumes expanding again. It looks to me like it's going to try to break them. And at this point, you have two of them down here. So if you break them, you potentially break multiple swing point lows. And that usually leads to two to three bars minimal, right? Faster move down. Where's support? There ain't no support until you get back down here. So if this breaks, there's really not much up underneath there. This is a fairly major sector, so if it breaks, it's going to have an impact. That's one way of looking at it. That's what this is doing. I've said before, you get two or three of these, you're going to get most of them. We've got four now, potentially five, and it looks to me like it's going to get worse. I also talked in here about some other ideas of ways to measure the market. One of them being, you know, I do... Uh, watch list or I have watch list that essentially I share with all the uh, uh, members of the site but if you come in here these watch lists these earnings watch lists and actually signals too you know those are post earnings trades and in two days after the trade if you make the trade you know the returns have been really good what is most interesting is that there are more negative ones than there are positive ones in other words, there's more bearish setups than there are bullish. That's another bottoms up type view of this market that's telling us this market's struggling. And it's going to continue to struggle for a while. And then the, there, there, there's another one here that I talked about uh, also in this article, and that has to do with just the number of stock trends. If we pop back in here and look at the trends again on this table, I guess I have to log back in. Uh, if you log, if you pop back in and look at the table there, uh, what you what you see, and we can go at it from uh, a different direction. If I can stop clicking, what you're going to see there is you're going to see in this table, right? You're getting breakdown here. Well, if you go look at the individual trends on stocks themselves, there are more bearish trends now than there are bullish. Last time I saw that was back earlier this year when everything started struggling and it happened up and lasted up through May. That's where we're at again. So there's multiple indications here that stocks are going to continue to struggle and uh, I believe that is the case. If I just count the sectors 
and I don't have it here in front of you, but if I count the sectors in terms of my notes tonight, I see the XLV, and I'll pop up the strong ones. I see the XLV hitting highs with volume, probably will try to test again. I see the SOX coming up with volume, may want to try to test that breakdown bar. That's the only two I've noted tonight that look as if they're going to test higher. Almost everything else is either is, is actually going to try to test lower and there's a couple of neutrals. So you can see sector wise not supporting a move to the top side. If I look at the world markets, okay so we've been having extreme strength in the world markets. We actually have continued extreme strength in the two that supply commodities, uh, or actually two of the three, that's the foot, that's the uh, TS, uh, the TSE, the Toronto Exchange, and the All Ordinaries uh, over in Australia. Both of those look strong. Elsewhere, we actually had higher numbers in Hong Kong, the Chinese Shanghai shares, higher volume, but it is going to try to come in now. Same thing with Hong Kong, presses higher, higher volume also is probably going to try to come in now. Nikkei breaks out, extends, there's a couple others doing that, just extending, not coming back in. And then if we go over and we look at Europe, Europe can't get out of the rut. Uh, here's the CACs, CACs down at the lows. Um, you know, if, if I was a classical TA guy, I'd still be looking at this and saying, okay, this looks like a bearish flag, uh, but yeah, it can't get it going and it looks like it's going to try to test that high volume low again. DAX looks the same way. Can't get going. Wants to try to test lower again. And the FTSE actually got up, tested the highs, failed off this July 8th bar. It's coming back in now. Volume expands. So Asia has been powering us higher. They look to stop. Or at least, you know, go sideways for a while. Europe, different situation. Europe wants to pull back in and test those lows. In, Europe, in the U.S., and remember we got PMI numbers all across the world starting tonight. U.S. looks like it also wants to try to pull back in. So that's kind of a summary. Um, I've been asked um, two or three times now to try to give a summary up front. And so there's your summary. That's a quick, you know, 15-minute view, and if that's all you want to see, I guess you can cut out at this point. If you want to see me talk about stocks you care about and maybe dig into some of these a little bit deeper, I will do that. Uh, and before I go to questions, and remember, you can ask me questions. You can pop them in. All you got to do is uh, write me. Support at TA Today. I'll pick that up from there. 303-912-9110 if you want to text the message in or you can type into the chat window if you're viewing this live. Those other two methods, you can send them to me anytime and I'll pick them up and, and do what, uh, you know, try to answer your questions on the show. All I ask is give me a direction, give me a time frame, you know, and of course give me whatever it is that you're interested in what stock. I want to point out a couple more things here that's kind of, you know, the same sort of idea. And that is, is that uh, we're getting that move, that breakdown move in the currencies. Here's the, the FXE, right? I talked about the breakdown and that once it broke down, more than likely it was going to extend and it broke on multiple time frames. So usually you get two to three bars to extension. We're on bar number one now. This low, it definitely is going to try to target, but it actually looks to me like it's going to try to trade even lower than that and probably uh, get uh, down into the lows of the support zone and maybe a little bit lower, maybe the high of this low. So this, if you're short, you just want to stay short. If you're not short, well, too bad. You missed it probably because it's, you know, the risk reward just isn't there now. If you flip over to the dollar, which is a large you know, it has a large weighting with the FXE. The dollar really got some volume into it today. The dollar extending to the upside, it's over the swing point highs, targeting the next levels. And so you got a nice, you know, nice big spike going here, spike down going in the FXE. As I've said before, this should pressure U.S. stocks. FXE declining should help European stocks. 
right? Because they're getting cheaper based on the euro. And so that should be the effects. Doesn't mean it has to happen right away, and, and it also doesn't mean it has to happen in general. It probably will happen though. Right now, the European stocks are pretty much held down as a result of all the mess that's taking place in Ukraine. This is where it's trying to target. You can see the ABCD structure. It's going to try to get right up in there. Okay, so that's that. I want to talk uh, just what little bit of time here before I pop the questions. I want to quickly show you two other things. TLT got hammered today. Volume expands. Remember, this thing was struggling up here. Just couldn't get over and, and really break out. Remember, you got the breakout. Let me get the little box up here. You got the breakout here, right off of this arrow that you see. And then it spiked down, right? And then it spikes back up and now comes off and finally the volume comes off with it. This thing's going to try to pull back in one more time. And if you look at it on the weekly, you know, it's a tough trade right now because on the weekly, it's what it's basically doing now is it's coming back in to do a fast retest regenerate right off of this bar. And when you do that, that means you can get to the lows of that bar and that's a pretty good piece down. So uh, this could trade all the way down to here before it catches support again. Um, so TLT, no man's land, still a hard trade. There, there will be times when it's easier. Right now it's hard. Uh, the other piece that I wanted to show you was junk bonds. So junk bonds, they had already signaled problems back here. Then they got this big blow off move, right? Then they spike back up. And you know, this happens over and over, these kinds of moves where you get a spike down, you blow it out, right? You see that green arrow saying confirm bearish trend. And then what does it do? It comes right back up and test into the retest regenerate. Well, actually, it's off of this one. Actually, let me pull that over and see if it held. I didn't quite get it drawn in right. It looks like it did. If I can get it, there it is. Yeah, it went right to the top. Look at that, right to the top of it. And then what happens? Just blows it out again and the volume comes out of it even more so. This thing's going lower, right? It's going to go lower. It's not done. Junk bonds coming off, right? They're coming off here. You got to break here as well now. And on a weekly, you're going to end up with a break of two swing point lows probably. And that, folks, is an issue. So why are junk bonds coming off so hard? You know, nobody wants to chase those yields anymore? I don't know. All I know is that, and we were talking about it in the trading room today, um, you're also seeing this with, and I forgot the symbol, but you're also seeing this with the S&P dividend stocks, which are totally underperforming. I think it was S, what was it, SDY? Yeah, here they are, the dividend stocks. These guys are totally underperforming. They're coming off as well. And they're going to come back, um, you know, it looks like quite a bit lower before they find support themselves. Well, actually, they've got some support here, so they're coming into it right now. But, but, you know, dividend stocks underperforming. There's so many divergences out here right now that really don't make a lot of sense. And, you know, I can't explain why they're happening. Here's a daily view of it. So it breaks another swing point low and broken multiples. Um, this is this is an issue, and, and matter of fact, if you go to the sector, you see it there too, right? Here's the XLP getting blown out of the water. Everybody's like abandoning these. All right, let's go to your questions, uh, see what we got here, and uh, see if I can try to answer them. Uh, LA, I noticed some large volume spikes on the XLY today, and recently, does, does it seem like sector rotation? Yeah, I see them too. Uh, I don't really know why they're happening. I haven't gone inside of it. And one of the things that uh, you know we've done here, and we can do it together, is we actually have, at this point uh, in the watch list, we actually have a shared watch list uh, that my one of the members created for the XLY. And we can see, or, or did I? Yeah, I did that one. So we've got, we've got the weighting structures in here. So I'd be curious to see which one of these is moving things. So let me, uh, 
Let me pop in there and see if we can tell what's happening. Because you really got to look inside and see who the heck's doing what. So let's start with uh, Comcast. Uh, Comcast volume is not crazy there, but a little bit higher than normal. And it spiked up and lost it on earnings, so that's not exactly enticing. But no huge volume there. Disney doesn't have huge volume. Amazon probably does. So part of the spike here is on Amazon, it looks like. And that is on July 25th. Let's pop over and see when the big bars are. <laughs> you would know it's on a day we don't have one. Why they're coming into these big bars, I don't know. I don't know what's driving it. Because, because this, of course, is the ETF. It doesn't necessarily have to have higher volume in uh, the stocks uh, because it's a proxy of that index or group of stocks, I should say. Yeah, I don't know what's driving it. Is it sector rotation? If it is, um, yeah, and all three times now has been what looks to be, let's, let's verify that, looks to be up volume. Let's see if we can tell. Yeah, so the volume today all comes in at the end and it's all by volume. Okay, so that was today. Uh, going back to the chart, this was the 16th. Let me go back to the 16th and go back 20 days. So the 16th is here. Yeah, and that was buy volume two on the open. And then the other one was July 9th. Uh, let me see if I can get the 9th up. That also was buying volume. Yeah, so somebody believes it. Maybe, maybe because, you know, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, we could, you know, we can try to rationalize it. And I try not to rationalize it too much, but, you know, the XLY is the consumer, right? It's discretionary. So, you know, if, if there's more and more people getting put to work, assuming that they're not, or, or well, there's two things. They're either getting put to work and they have money, or they're borrowing. And I know there is more borrowing taking place now. Um, so, you know, maybe the assumption here is that the XLY is going to benefit from that and work higher. Let me put it back on the weekly here. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I can't, I can't answer it directly. I don't know. I don't know what's driving this, but they're all up volume, so... That would suggest that somebody certainly thinks it's a place to put the money. Uh, let's see here. Uh, SVK asks, uh, Hi, LA, can you please give me your thoughts on IP? Uh, short, long, short term time frame, maybe a bounce. So he wants to go long IP on a short term time frame. So I assume this was earnings. Spike up, you're all the way back down to the bottom. Let's see what the weekly looks like. Oh, that's interesting. What's interesting about it is you spike high with, you know, leave volume up there, but you can't hold it, and it would have been, well, you actually had the breakout here. That high, that close was uh, 50.05. So, yeah, so, okay, so the first thing I would notice here on a weekly is that you've got the breakout here that broke three of the four highs yet it couldn't carry through. If you break that many highs, that swing point highs, you should get two to three bars extension. You didn't. Okay, that just tells me something's not quite right. Right, because that's, you know, that's a high percentage play and it didn't come to fold. So something's weird there. So let's go back to here. So this was off a lower low. You have selling in front of it. Boy, I don't know. This is a hard tail too. Let me look at one more thing. Let me look at the monthly. So it's right at the highs. Well, the good thing is, I mean, if you want to play it, you buy it right here and you give it nothing. I mean, you, you, you can give it a buck if you want to be safe, you know, back just slightly under 47. 
or you can play it right here where it is under today's lows. So if it opens here tomorrow where it closed and holds for the first, you know, five, 10 minutes or so, you just buy it and put a stop right up underneath it, you know, 47.90 or something. You don't have to risk much and you got a decent chance of, you know, risk reward is great. I just don't know if it's gonna hold or not. It should, but I don't know if it will because something's wrong with the chart. I don't know what it is. Something's just awkward here. Um, I don't know what I don't know what's driving it. Okay, next one, IBB come back from here. So IBB was trying to push up again today. Amgen came out and uh, said they were gonna do some closures. But IBB failed. Uh, I was watching it all day because I happened to be short this index. And it got up to the top, 260.31, got over it, back underneath it, failed. So, you know, unless this thing can push tomorrow and get over it, and of course I'd close out my short if it does, but unless it can get up there and push over it, uh, it's gonna fail here again. And if that's true, uh, then you're gonna see this thing unravel. And, and that's hard to believe because if I could look at the IBB, you know, the internals of, of what's in it, in just a second, let me pop to that list. Uh, IBB components and it's shared folks so you can get to it too if you're a member so if I go in here and look at like you know the major components here's Amgen just blows things away today over the highs right so that one looks like it wants to go higher then I look at BIIB Biogen that's also pressing highs right then I look at Celgene which is the heaviest weighting one that one's struggling to get it to the new highs um, Alexan uh, is another one. That one's struggling. So you can see some of them struggling, but then you got like uh, Gilead. It's at new highs. So you got, you got, you know, that's the highest weightings one. So you got 7, 14, 21, 20, 21? Yeah, 21 percent of the index striking new highs, but it can't get over the highs. So I don't know. It looks to me like it's going to fail here and come back. That's an IBB. Uh, Tommy was interested in Nike. Uh, NKE. So let's take a look at Nike. So Nike was uh, actually driving the Dow today. It was higher, broke out. Uh, it's going to be a suspect breakout. Let's see what the weekly is. I think it's over the highs there too. Uh, if I can spell it right. No, not quite. So, okay, so here's an interesting one. And this is something, you know, I was talking about it earlier. You know, or I've talked about it before. This is a breakdown bar. In other words, you go up, you test highs, you can't hold, you break down, and you get a big wide price spread heavy volume bar. You actually got that on this high as well, right? That's eh, not quite right. It was on the next bar. But that's a breakdown bar here. That's the May, or excuse me, March 17th on the weekly. What does it do? It comes all the way back up there to test it again. So that high is 80, 80. You're at 79.61, you get to 79.94. It definitely is gonna try to test it. That's probably gonna come tomorrow. You got a suspect break here, but it breaks two swing points. So now you've got an excellent test that you can watch. That will tell you what to do. If it can carry two to three bars, right or at least stay up here right don't in other words don't fall straight back down then that more than likely it's it's telling you it's doing what it should the problem with that is that the odds are diminished because of what it's coming into so if it does that it's telling you it's going to break these highs and go higher if it can't it won't and it's going to fail again it's going to come back so it's very easy on this one to tell what's going to happen. You just watch it the next day, uh, next day or two. If it can expand up here, hold up here, then it's probably going to break them out and go higher. If it can't, right, if it comes back, it's a whole different story, right? It's going to give it up again. Uh, and it has, yeah, it does. I'm sure it does. It has some weighting in the XLY. Um, but evidently the weighting, if I go back to the XLY, I don't think the weighting's that heavy because I don't think it showed up. Let me see. XLY, yeah, it's not even in the top, it's not even in the top, uh, no, I take it back, it's 2.77%. So it is a weighting inside there, but it's, you know, it's not that much. 45% uh, of the sectors in the top 10, and so it's only 2% of that. 
Okay, I run out of time here. I think these markets are going to struggle again tomorrow. And I say that, uh, you know, with them holding up again today, but it certainly looks to be uh, what it's going to try to do. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for all the great questions. Tomorrow's Thursday. We'll do it one more time. We'll see how it fades or grays my hair a bit more and pushes higher. I, you know, at some point, this market is going to have to pull back. I just don't know exactly where it's going to do it, so we just keep our ears to the ground and we'll try to stay out of trouble.